Welcome folks, it's me, Aaron the Artist. One of the big problems artists face these days is how difficult it is to get anywhere on social media. So, with that in mind, which social media sites are the best for artists? I'm going to be reviewing all of the sites that I've used, talking about all the good and the bad for each one, so that you can decide which ones are best for you. And while I do that, you'll be able to see a little bit of the concept art for my original character Rin and the world that I'm building, Omnes. Well, let's get on with that review. The first thing to think about is Instagram. There are definitely some good things to say about Instagram. It's a visual media sharing site. The point of the site is to share images and videos. This can be nice for artists because when it comes to social media, you're kind of in a fight for attention from viewers. And this just being a visual media site means you aren't competing so much with music or writing creators. You're just competing with other people who make nice images or videos. And artists, being in the business of making nice images, have a really high chance of doing well over them. It's on top of that, you can post multiple images in a single post, and if you're clever, there are some pretty cool ways to play with that feature to make your artwork more engaging. But there are some ways Instagram isn't that friendly for artists. Posts all have to fit within Instagram's dimension restrictions. Essentially, you can post squares, or you can post slightly squished squares, and that's it. If your art is in any other dimension, bits will get chopped off and it won't look good. The main issue I have with Instagram is that it used to be a site dedicated to images, and that was great for artists. But over the last few years, they decided to shift away from that and to focus heavily on reels. Reels are like really short video clips. Now they're focused on reels so much that you basically have to make reels if you want your work to get seen. Reels get loads more engagement than regular posts because Instagram prioritizes reels in their algorithms. So how does that affect artists? Well, it means if you want to do well on Instagram and you aren't already a famous artist, you need to make reels. And that means you need to get good at making video on top of getting good at making artwork. It isn't enough that you spend hours painting an image. You also need to find entertaining ways to make a video out of that artwork. And that takes up a lot of extra effort and learning that maybe you just don't want to do. You can try uploading time lapses of your work. That's pretty easy to make. And I do that sometimes. But in my experience, unless you have God tier artwork, that kind of stuff doesn't do well, unless you add something further like a commentary. Being an artist on Instagram these days means being a video creator as well. In terms of popularity, Instagram has over 2 billion active users, meaning you can reach a huge amount of people, both artists and non-artists. And that's important, because the ability to reach non-artists is a really good thing if you're trying to build an audience, and especially if you're trying to do commissions. In terms of the engagement that you get on Instagram, as the platform's gotten older, it's become seriously saturated with artists. And now there is so much competition on the site that posting your work feels a bit like screaming into a void most of the time. What typically happens on Instagram is the big names in the space get all of the engagement and new and smaller artists get almost nothing. You can help yourself do a little bit better in this respect by putting yourself out there and engaging with other people on the platform, but in my experience that doesn't make as much difference as you might think. Instagram tends to encourage this weird social influencer mentality, where everybody wants to be a kind of celebrity. A large number of users will only interact with your stuff so that they can get interaction back, and in general, there's this very fake feel to a lot of Instagram engagements as a smaller creator. I have been bashing Instagram for quite a while now, and I haven't had that much good to say, but here's somewhere that it does shine. Instagram looks fantastic. It looks better than any of the other platforms that I'll talk about. The layout is super clean and sleek. You can put together your feed in some super aesthetic ways if you're careful with it. Because of this, you can easily create your own personal vibe for your account if you want to. If you want your art to look really cool, this is the site to be. In the end, the main pull of Instagram is that it's by far the biggest media sharing site. If you want to get your art in front of a huge audience of both artists and non-artists, and you're willing to put in the effort to make reels, Instagram is a great idea for you. TikTok is... it's not really for art. 
It's a video sharing platform that focuses mainly on short snack-sized clips. Much like with Instagram, you need to become a video artist if you want to do well on TikTok. You can't do well with just images, and that takes a lot more work on top of your art. Like with Reels, time lapses by themselves won't usually do that well. On TikTok, the kind of things that tend to do well are dance videos, funny videos, and videos of attractive women doing, well, Anything. all this reminds me of another video sharing platform. On TikTok, you are competing with essentially every other form of media that there is. Music, art, comedy, storytelling, dancing, extreme sports, clips from TV, everything. And so getting people to stop and pay attention to your art when there are so many other much louder, more flashy videos can be difficult. On the plus side, TikTok is pretty big, having over 1.5 billion users and a decent sized art community, meaning that you could stand to reach a big audience if you can get some momentum going. In my experience, the community is a bit of a mixed bag. Some people are very critical and negative, but lots of people are supportive and grateful of everything that you share. From what I can tell, the art community on TikTok is the younger side of it. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, just worth keeping in mind. I've got some pretty mixed feelings about the algorithm as well. The TikTok algorithm is completely unpredictable. Things that worked for you once and blew up won't necessarily work next time. And you'll see people really taking off with millions of views. And then you'll see other people that do those exact same things with better quality and they get nowhere. Having said that, TikTok is way better than any of the other social media algorithms in that if you genuinely make good videos, you can gain momentum pretty quickly. I'm not exaggerating when I say this. I gained almost 10 times more followers in six months on TikTok than I gained in three years on Instagram. In the end, if you're willing to put in the work to make videos, especially tutorials, and you aren't afraid of the insane level of competition, TikTok probably has the potential to quickly grow a following for artists. All right, let's get on to Twitter. Twitter is a social media site that lets you write short messages. 150 characters max, and then you can post them out there for the world to see. You can attach images to your tweets as well, and short video clips. There are a few things that make Twitter friendly for artists. First, you can upload images in any dimension that you want, meaning you don't have to fuss about cramming your art into a perfect square once you're finished with it. As well as that, you can post multiple images at once, and you get them viewable side by side. You can, if you want, upload process videos of your work, but from what I've seen, you don't have to post videos in order to do well on Twitter. You can just stick with images, and that's great news for artists who don't want to do the whole video thing, like on TikTok or Instagram. Uploading new work to Twitter is really fast, and that might be one of my favourite things about it. The character limit means you aren't expected to write a huge description of the work. You don't need to spend hours researching whether to use hashtag digital art, or hashtag artwork, or hashtag anime art 5000 or any of those other silly hashtags that you have to sift through. Just attach the image, write a few words, and hit post. Okay, on to some of the downsides. Like TikTok, you are competing on Twitter with everything. Music, video, comedy, art, writing, news, TV, everything. So if you're a little known artist, it can be hard to stand out. One thing that really annoys me about Twitter is it's really hard to maintain a nice aesthetic feed of your own art. If you retweet things that other people have posted, be that other artwork or GIFs or just things that you're interested in, all that stuff shows up on your profile mixed in with your art posts. Because of that, anyone who comes to your profile interested in your art is going to struggle to actually find your art mixed among all your other retweets. In terms of engagement, Twitter had, until very recently, an incredibly strong and active art community. It's very easy to find circles that you fit in with, to talk with like-minded people, and to mix with other artists. The artists I've met on the site have also been generally friendly and supportive. Twitter generally feels a lot less like a bunch of people trying to be celebrities, like Instagram, and it feels a lot more like a giant casual conversation. Perhaps one of the best things about Twitter is the way that it encourages you to talk to anyone at all. Now I, I have to mention the problem with Twitter. 
Twitter has a reputation for being an incredibly toxic platform full of very angry users. And that's 100% true. Lots of users there are full of hatred and looking to start a fight with you over basically anything. Others log onto Twitter just so that they control others. And many people talk to you like they're trying to score points against you through getting more likes or retweets in these weird internet shouting matches. Out of every social media site that I've tried, Twitter is the only one where I very often log out feeling annoyed by something that happened. I think the best feature of Twitter is the retweet function. Essentially, if you post something and someone else likes it, that someone else can hit retweet and they will then be posting your post again for you, giving the people they're connected to a chance to see your post, even if those people wouldn't normally have seen anything from you. This thing is fantastic. If you post something and people like it, your art can be passed around to tens of thousands of people in a heartbeat because of the retweet function, and that can happen even if you don't perform well in the algorithm. I don't have that much to say about the algorithm itself on Twitter. It's okay. It's about as bad as most of the other algorithms on other platforms. But this brings me to one of the big issues with Twitter. I keep saying Twitter was good, and it did have a huge community. I'm speaking in past tense because a lot of that is starting to crumble away. Not long ago, Twitter was bought by Elon Musk. A large part of the art community was heavily critical of Musk and did not want him in charge of the site. Since then, Twitter has become gradually more and more buggy and Musk has made various changes that have completely destroyed some of the traditional features of the site. As a result, a lot of artists are gradually leaving Twitter. Still, Twitter has some of the best sharing functions, and it's super easy and casual. I want to say just a few words about both ArtStation and DeviantArt. DeviantArt is the original art site. Back in the early days of the internet, DeviantArt was the cool place to be if you were an artist, and it had a ton of functionality for artists. It was a great place for all of us to go, share work, take commissions, join groups, all of that. ArtStation was kind of the opposite. It was much more formal and professional. ArtStation was a place you could go to host your professional portfolio, network with other artists, and even get recruited for jobs in the art industry. The problem I have with both sites, and the reason why I won't say any more about either of them, is this. This year, both ArtStation and DeviantArt made it clear that they don't care about artists, and are more interested in making a quick buck through AI-generated images. Essentially, there is a piece of computer software that can create art that, at least on the surface, is a similar quality to the art of some of the best artists in the world. It can spit out art in almost any existing style, including art styles of very specific popular artists. It can do all this just by you typing in a few words into the search bar and hitting go. So how did they make this thing? Well, they made it by scraping all of the art from around the web and building an algorithm out of it. They took all of our art, they used it to build their new service without asking any of the artists if they were allowed to, and without buying the licenses which would allow them to use the art. What the AI company have done is scoop up all of the hard work, skill and creativity of the art community, build a machine that might well replace a large number of those artists in the future, and cut the artists completely out of the picture. Alright, well, what does ArtStation or DeviantArt have to do with this? In short, the art community has been trying for months to get ArtStation to moderate AI-generated art, to take some stance in support of the art community against this stuff. ArtStation hasn't done that, and instead, they've been actively suppressing any attempt by artists to campaign against AI image generation. By this point, the entire of ArtStation has become basically nothing except AI-generated art, a large number of artists have left the platform and deleted all of their works, and users of AI generators have completely flooded the platform. DeviantArt is basically the exact same thing, except on top of doing that, they also created their own AI image generator, DreamUp. So friends, it saddens me that both platforms are now absolutely swamped with AI generated images, so much so that you you can't really find human artists on there, buried in the sea of AI generation. On top of that, the people in charge of these platforms don't care at all about the art community, 
and so I can't honestly recommend either ArtStation or DeviantArt. Well, now that's out of the way, let's seek out some friendlier skies. Inkblot is a site I've been trying out over the last couple of months. Compared to the other sites, it's very new, but I've had a pretty good experience. It's super easy to upload your art onto Inkblot. You can upload in any dimension, and they have a range of features for showing off the process of your work. You can upload videos, before and after clips, write short statuses, upload music, write blog posts, all of that. The site is owned and created by artists. The creators are passionate about art and the art community. The creators are also completely against the use of NFTs and AI-generated images on the platform, and they've got moderators specifically to remove that stuff. The devs are constantly working on new features as well. Since I joined, there are now interesting things like groups, where you can find like-minded creators, Inkblot hosts frequent art challenges you can participate in, and there's even a dedicated space specifically to commissions, where you can list yourself as open for commission, and others can request commissions from you. Engagement on the platform isn't bad. Everyone I encounter there seems friendly and happy to support. It's not as good as other sites for this, but that's because it's still a very, very small website. Not very many artists are over there at the moment because it's only recently started to gain any momentum. On top of that, I'm not sure if there are very many non-artists that frequent the site. With other social medias that I've mentioned, there's always a massive body of non-artists roaming around on there that might stumble into your work. As I said, this is pretty important. Inkblot does have non-creator accounts, so that people who just want to discover art can join up, and that's a great idea. But I'm not sure how many non-creators are actually on the site at the moment. I'm sure that if Inkblot grew to a much bigger size, it could eventually get around this problem. But at the moment, I'm not sure that many people really know about the site who aren't artists, and it's going to take quite a bit of promotion, both from the owners and the artists on the site, to change that. If you're looking for an art community hosted by people who care about both the art and the community, and you're not that bothered by the small size, I'd recommend Inkblot. So, in the end, we've got four sites. Instagram, a visual media site with a huge audience base and a professional aesthetic feel that relies on you making reels to stay relevant. TikTok, a video sharing site with massive potential for growth but again, you have to make quality videos in addition to making art. Twitter, a large but messy interconnected community with great sharing features, so long as you can ignore the most hateful people. And Inkblot, a very small art sharing site with a passionate community and passionate devs. Of course, there are other sites which I haven't mentioned, such as Tumblr and Kara. I just don't know enough about those to give a review. A lot of folks end videos like this by doing some kind of ranking for the sites, choosing a winner. I'm not going to do that. I think it just depends what you're looking to do with your art, and what you're personally prepared to do to get there. So I'll cut it here for today. If you like this video, do all those things for me, and have a nice day.